Well, on September the 8th, I was ordained uh, a bishop, auxiliary bishop of Los Angeles. And you know, one of the um, uh, marks of a bishop is a coat of arms. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the symbolism in the coat of arms, which is really sort of interesting. Uh, first of all, there's some generic things are always present in a bishop's coat of arms. One is the, the galero, you know, the formal uh, ceremonial hat. So an ordinary level bishop, so I'm at the starting level auxiliary, has a green galero. And then coming from the galero are these um, uh, kind of ropes with tassels on the end. And so a low level bishop like myself gets 12 tassels. When you move to like archbishop and then the cardinal, the tassels increase. So that's the uh, a standard feature. Another standard feature is the processional cross, and uh, you see that in my coat of arms. Uh, now some of the distinctive elements come in. In the middle of the processional cross on mine is a little um, circular design that evokes the rose design on the Mundelein Seminary seal. So one thing I told the man designing my coat of arms, I wanted a tribute to Mundelein Seminary, where I've spent really most of my adult life where I've uh, taught, I've been rector, it's a place that's meant a great deal to me. So if you look on the Mundelein seal, around the central um, image is that sort of rose window design. And also it's red, in the, in the color version of the coat of arms, the circle is red, which is also is taken from the Mundelein uh, seal. Uh, but the rose window also evokes um, the rose windows of the Gothic churches, which I've loved and mean a lot to me in terms of the spiritual life. It also invokes, evokes uh, the little flower, whose um, symbol, of course, is the rose. So a lot of that's packed into that little uh, image in the middle of the processional cross. Now, if you go down from the cross to the shield, so-called, the central uh, shield, uh, you see the top part is um, these two wings, in the middle of which is a fleur-de-lis. Well, the fleur-de-lis is evocative of Mary, the mother of God, and then the angel's wings stand for um, uh, the angels, and the city of the angels, so Los Angeles. Um, Los Angeles is just the last couple words of this longer phrase, right? The Maria Reina de Los Angeles, Mary the Queen of the Angels. Uh, I was ordained in the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels, in the city of Los Angeles, and in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. So all that coming together is kind of extraordinary. So the artist, for all three of us being ordained that day, uh, he has a symbol of, of, of Los Angeles. Now go right below that, you see a little wavy line. This is a very subtle reference. He asked me if there's any place that was of great significance for me. I said, well, I studied for three years in Paris. I have a great love for Paris, the Institut Catholique and Notre Dame Cathedral and all this. So the little wavy line, he said, evokes the gentle waves of the River Seine in the heart of Paris. Now go below that line, and you see a book open and with a Cairo in the middle. The Cairo is the, the first two letters of the name Christos in Greek, so it symbolizes Jesus, who himself is the Word. And Jesus has been the center of my academic life, so the book symbolizes a lot of that. But let's see what the flame around it, obviously, is the Word on fire. So I wanted a tribute to Mundelein, where I've given most of my life, but also to Word on Fire, this ministry that I found it, it has now been a vehicle for uh, evangelization around the world. I'm very proud of it. So, word on fire. And also, more generally, as a bishop, you know, as a preacher of the fiery word of God, all that's there. There's a subtle feature, too. Um, the designer asked me if there was a doctrine that was of importance to me. And I said, well, funny you ask, because there is. Namely, the two natures doctrine of Chalcedon. So, the church gathered in the year 451. Chalcedon is a little town outside of Constantinople. And they hammered out this doctrine about Jesus, in which they said that in Jesus, two natures come together, divine and human, without mixing, mingling, or confusion. If you read articles of mine and sermons, you know uh, it's very important to me because a lot of Catholic teaching hinges on this point, that divinity and humanity come together in Jesus in a non-competitive way. So we learn a lot about God, a lot about ourselves, a lot about how they relate to each other. So the two natures doctrine is really central. Well, the artist, I thought, did a very interesting job in expressing this. If you look at the, the play of colors in the, in the full color version, in the book and the flame, you have a gold and you have red, and they kind of alternate. You'll see that they, they, they come together, in other words, without mixing, mingling, or confusion, like the two natures of, of Jesus. So it was a very 
I thought an interesting way to resolve it. Another subtle thing is, you know, the flame around the book is the word on fire, but also that's a reference to Aquinas, because in all the depictions of Thomas, there's usually a, a sunburst, a, a, a sun symbol on his chest. So that's another subtle reference to him. At the very bottom of the shield, you see sort of hanging off the bottom, there's a, a, a Jerusalem cross. Well, that's a reference to the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre, and I'm a member of that uh, organization, and it's a, that's a, you know, hundreds year old organization that is dedicated to really defending uh, Christianity in the, in the Holy Land. So I'm very proud of that, and he put that symbol at the very bottom. Uh, the last feature I'll draw attention to is the motto, and the motto I chose is Non Nisi Te Domine, and this is a line from St. Thomas Aquinas. So in, um, at the end of his, of his life, Thomas is working on the section of the Summa Theologiae dealing with the Eucharist which is a theological masterpiece. You read it now, it's one of the great statements on that uh, sacrament. But um, Thomas was, was dissatisfied with it, thought it didn't do justice to the sacrament. So he placed the text at the foot of the cross in his cell in Naples. And one of the thrills of my life was last year we were filming for our series on Thomas, and we filmed right in that cell, and they have the icon before which he placed the text. Well, the story goes that from that icon, from the cross, came a voice that said, Thomas, you've written well of my body. What would you have as a reward? And Thomas responded with my uh, motto, non nisi te domine, which means literally, nothing if not you, Lord. So I'll have nothing except you. And it's one of these wonderful uh, spiritual moments uh, of great clarity. Imagine if the Lord is asking you directly, what do you want? What do you want? See, and if you say anything but what Thomas said, you're giving the wrong answer. Because if you ask for some form of wealth or pleasure or honor or power, the things that we typically want, but you don't have Christ, those things will eventually turn on you. You know what I'm saying? If you have them all. You get them all. But you don't have Christ to order your life. They will turn on you turn the whole thing around. If you have Christ, then you'll know what to do with whatever wealth, pleasure, power, and honor come your way, or, or you'll know what to do with the lack of wealth, pleasure, honor, and power. See, which is why the one thing you should ask for is Christ himself, which is what Thomas saw. So I chose it as a motto because I think it's, it's at the very heart of the spiritual life, and it's a tribute to Thomas Aquinas, who is the reason I became a priest and uh, so it's a, it was actually a great joy, I must say, to uh, contribute to the coat of arms. Obviously, I didn't do it. This, this uh, very fine artist did it. But to kind of think through my life and what are some things I want to pay tribute to, what's meant a lot to me. And uh, a good deal of that is summed up in the coat of arms.